Hi guys and welcome to another exciting episode. Today we are here with the Conductive Classic team and their 1964 Ford Galaxy E build. So they started with a four-door Galaxy and they added the complete drivetrain from a Tesla Model 3 from 2019. Um, and they have a very innovative way of including or adding the battery pack. So they rebuilt the complete chassis around the battery pack and let's check it out. Hello and welcome to another episode and today we have something quite fantastic. You cannot tell but behind this is a Tesla Model 3. So a new build it, so tell us more about it. Uh, it's 1964 Ford Galaxy. Uh, we bought the car originally uh, to, to do a little bit of st something else too but we decided to go ahead and go with the, the, the conversion on it. Uh, full Model 3 long range battery pack in the floor, just like it is in a Tesla, you pop the back seat, everything's underneath there. Yeah. Uh, brakes are on it, uh, wheels from the Model 3, uh, Model 3 performance rear drive motor, uh, full suspension in the rear, so it has independent rear suspension, sitting on Ride Tech air suspension, and uh, it's got the electric brake booster, pretty much uh, all the drive components from the Model 3 are in it. So what makes you choose the Model 3 and the Ford also? Um, the Model 3 was, we wanted to use them because they're a little bit more readily available as far as the parts go. Uh, there, you know, there, there's quite a few of them that get wrecked quite often. So, you know, we, uh, <laughs> so, so they are available. Um, the Galaxy, the real reason behind the Galaxy was the battery would fit. Okay. Uh, you know, a large car is really what you need to make the Model 3 battery fit. So we need to explain how you fitted the, the battery on the chassis, chassis on frame. Okay. Uh, setup. So yeah. you cut the chassis, widen it to let the battery pack yep. fit pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the frame has been completely rebuilt underneath the car from the firewall all the way back to the rear bumper. Uh, it was had, had to be widened so that the Model 3 battery could go up in the floor and uh, the rear portion of it had to be modified so that the independent rear suspension could fit in it. All right, so was it your first build? How did you just decide to chop off a, a Galaxy and then a Tesla? This was actually our second build. We did a, a 1959 Apache uh, before, and uh, we, did, we were pretty basic with that, you know, uh, seven Model S batteries and a, and a Hyper 9 motor, you know. Uh, so we wanted to get, we wanted to go faster, haul more people, and, you know, go farther with this car. So, um, we decided to use the Model 3 stuff because it's really efficient and the performance on the motor is really, really good. So you chose two different strategies in two builds. What will be your next one? Uh, the next one's probably gonna use a few more aftermarket parts as far as batteries go and stuff like that. Uh, mainly because I, I really, really like the Model 3 battery pack, but it's just so hard to fit into, a, into most cars. Um, so. Uh, I, I'm really trying to convince my, my friend who's a partner in a race car with me to do our E30 M3. Um, he's, he's really reluctant, but you know, <laughs> we'd like to do it anyway. All right, uh, let's see what's under the hood. Okay, let me, it's, it's probably really dirty. Well, it's being used. Yeah, <laughs> it's been used and oh, hey, my, oh, these my, my donuts have moved my, my stuff. Oh, I broke one, oops. That's why there was liquid underneath it. Okay. <laughs> So what's on, under all the Under that basically yeah. is an empty engine bay. You know, we built it when we first did it, we took it to a couple of shows and there was just nothing in there and it kind of looked boring. And so we had one of our, one of our fabricators in the shop built a framework for it and, and uh, built the cooler in there. And actually at a couple of shows, that's fake ice in there right now, but at a couple of shows, we've actually had real ice and waters and stuff like that on the hotter days and whatnot. All right, good stuff. Now let's see where the battery pack is. Okay. So if you've if you've ever lifted up the rear seat of your Model Three, so it's just as easy on the Ford. Yeah, me. Uh, maybe maybe it's easier in the Tesla. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit easier because the seat's smaller in the Tesla. <laughs> the seat kind of goes door to door. So, but you know, there's your there we are. entire Model Three battery pack, you know, inverter, uh, charger, DC to DC, everything is built inside there. We just had seat heaters installed in the seats so that we can get a little bit of heat in here, so. Perfect. So the, the floor had to be modified also? The rear of the floor had to be lifted about an inch and a half. Okay. The That's front it. of the floor was left alone because it's shallower anyway but the rear of the floor had to be lifted about an inch. And if you had to redo this setup, would you do it the same way? 
If I was going to do this same car again, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. It, it performs great. You know, I get about 150 miles of range on the freeway going 75 miles an hour and about 200 miles in town. So. Okay. Let's see what's in the trunk. Oh, keys are in the ignition. Very nice details. Is there any particular reason you opted for the, the gray and orange? Um, you know, orange is the high voltage color. Yeah. You know, every, everything, the cables and all that stuff are, are orange. So we went with the orange pinstripes and the orange little detail on the wheels. Uh, the, the beach cruiser bike that we normally have on top of this thing has an orange pinstripe around the wheels as well to kind of go with it. And then all the Ford lettering is all orange in the middle as well. And a little bit, a little bit on the Galaxy symbol yeah. there and stuff. And in the trunk is all of my stuff for the show. Is, is the charge port just under the... the no, no? Uh, we, did, we were going to put the charge port here, but you can see as it sits, it would sit at an angle. And we were worried yeah. about it holding water yeah. uh, that way. So the charge port is right there. Uh, you know, it's, it's in my garage or in the shop when it charges generally. So, you know, it's not a big deal having it inside the car. So we can clearly see the Model 3 performance setup. Yeah. So what were the main challenging in, challenges in uh, setting it all up? The, the, the first challenge was uh, finding somebody who had the, the control of the Model 3 components. Uh, a company called Enginext. Okay, because we haven't mentioned you built this um, almost two years ago, was it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So way before the industry was even an industry. A, a couple of a couple of companies have come around to do the Model Three stuff, but still a pretty limited deal, which is surprising because the motors are fantastic. Yeah. So same same thing. If you had to redo uh, the same car, you would opt for Tesla Model Three performance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If we if we ever do the M3, that's what's going in it. It'll okay. probably be all-wheel drive. Okay, now about performance range. Well, tell us more about it. Um, the performance, it, it, it basically performs as a, as a Model 3 would. It weighs about 30 pounds less than wow. the Model 3 that we pulled everything out okay. of. Um, you would think th this would be much heavier. You would think, but yeah. there's a lot less wires in this car. <laughs> <laughs> and safety systems. Yeah, and yeah. safety systems and that kind of stuff. Crumple zones and all that kind of stuff, you know. And seat belts. There's no seat belts to weigh it down either. Um, but, uh, yeah, the... The performance is great. And like I said, 140 miles, 150 miles or so on the freeway, going 70, 75 miles an hour and 200 miles around town. You know, it charges overnight, basically. It's, it's a level two charging system, so I can charge at 48 amps. Okay, perfect, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, what would be the next step in your build? Is there anything you will do differently? The next step I would do if, if, you know, in the continuation of this car or doing another one would be to get the thermal management for the battery a little bit better, kind of do some work on that and get it to where it can fast charge. Yeah. And then uh, I think uh, beyond that, I don't know, I'm pretty happy with it. Okay. <laughs> um, I noticed you have a sticker on your windshield saying Ruined. Ruined is typically a Tesla club, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, I went to the Long Beach Electrify Expo and uh, I was walking around there and, and I saw these Teslas with the Ruined sticker on them and, and I thought, well, you know, everybody says I've ruined this car. So I, I was like, I just wanted a sticker. I'm like, hey, can I, can I get one of those stickers from you guys? And they're like, well, what kind of car do you have? And I went over and showed them the Galaxy. They're like, oh, absolutely, you know, welcome to the club, you know, kind of thing. So great, great group of guys. I would argue that you saved this car. You saved both cars, actually. You, you saved the Tesla because it was all going to go, you know, in bits anyway. And the, well, how bad or how good was the Ford, the base vehicle, when you started the project? This car was actually in excellent condition. Okay. Really? So maybe, it, it, maybe it had 28,000 original miles on it. Um, <laughs> But you know, it was it was a 289, a three oh, yeah. on, three on the tree. So you know, it was a it was grandma's car, and yeah. and uh, it you know it was a four door. So people really don't fix up four doors, and they're you know so they don't they don't find them special. So um, it was one of those cars that wasn't going to have much done to it in its life anyway. So the thing is, when you see it like slammed like this, it just looks fantastic. You more people should do them. Yep. Yeah. Is there anything particular on the on the dash we should show? Uh, um, it's uh, it's got all the stock gauges okay. in it right now. I'm working with uh, Nginx to for the CAN language on the on the Model Three stuff to go into a Lingenfelter box that converts the CAN to analog signal. Okay. So then we can run the temperature and and uh, uh, let's have a, a, a look real quick just Absolutely. in case. And maybe you could show us what you do with it. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, we'll see who's watching. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do see one. Uh, 
Okay, he's pulling in over there. All right. So, yeah, <laughs> we may need a minute to be ready, but yeah. But yeah, all stock gauges, stock AM radio in there. You know, it actually works with the one speaker in the dash. You know, that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's it's a it's a really fun car. It gets looks everywhere it goes. Everybody, you know, everybody enjoys it, whether it, you know, whether they know it's electric or not. Yeah, and you have the cool surfboard on the top on the yep. roof. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Did you keep the original light system? Yep, original lights, everything, you know, the original 12 volt system for the car is all the same, you know, the, okay. all this, all the switching and stuff like that, so. Uh, you did not mention, yeah, you did mention the next project. Um, is it a business you're going to set up? Uh, are you growing? Is it your full-time job? And how should people get the hold of you? Um, Conductive Classics is uh, is our business for, for doing the conversions. Uh, we've done a few of them. We've done probably uh, 10 of them at this point. And uh, mostly mostly uh, Hyper 9 stuff, but this this one, this one and another one, we just finished up a, a 74 E100 van okay. that uh, has the Model 3 battery pack and the drivetrain in it as well, the whole drive system, so. Right. Yeah. So let me show you what it does. Yeah. Well, let's uh, see if we can't get in some trouble. <laughs> oh, what's happening? All right, that's what you do. It's Tesla Model 3 Performance uh, Drivetrain. Um, if you like what you saw, just leave us a comment and a like. <laughs> I really love this. Uh, we need more of those guys uh, completely converting those classic. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank uh, you. What's the website if those guys want to get the hold of you? Conductiveclassics.com. Oh, that was easy enough. All right, guys, uh, let us know in the comments if you want to see more of this. And I'm not just talking about donuts. We're just filming cruise by now. OK? Hey, just, just be safe. OK, we absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if okay. we if we find that guy, we will let him know that that is a bad thing and not to do it again. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. the car looks amazing. <laughs> it's completely silent, so I'm assuming electric power train. Yeah. Yes, sir. You want to go for a drive? Come on. Oh, Come. Come on. Exactly. Come. But I'll hop out and talk with you, though. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm an I'm electric nut, so. Cool. Here, wait. Did you, you still filmed it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah. It always it always helps that it's, it's something special and it looks cool because yeah. people let you get away with a few things, you know? <laughs> if we did anything wrong, of if course. We, uh, yeah, you know, allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> so,